Hello everyone, today I thought we'd take a look at adding a WebAssembly Ruby version into our Rails application. Again, not really a case of if we should, but rather if we could. Uh, this is an interesting look at what WebAssembly with Ruby might look like in the future. Now, if you're not familiar, WebAssembly will allow you to run Ruby inside of your uh, console here. So if we come over to our elements, and I full screen this so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, you can see that we have a script tag down here that has a type of text slash Ruby. If we open that up, you can see we're requiring JS inside of it, and then we're just calling regular puts commands. This also allows you to do some JS stuff where you can do like a JS eval where you can run JavaScript code inside of this front end Ruby. Uh, but really the coolest part to me is that you can use your Ruby in the front end to uh, just run some stuff is a little bit different than using like your uh, your rails tags that you're familiar with just because those are going to be executed from the server uh, and here it's going to be executed from from the client but uh still pretty cool so let's go ahead let's take a look at like how we can do this so there's a couple different options if we come over to this npm package for ruby dash head dash wasm dash wazi uh, and after we uh, finish reading the title for about five years we can scroll down and we can see there's two options here one is a quick start for node.js this has a setup that you can follow uh and the drawback here is it does require you to use node command to run it and you have to specify the page you're going to run uh, so that's really not great or the file you're going to run um, there is a quick start for the browser which allows you to do a cdn js deliver and again it's not quite great because there is quite a bit of setup it requires a polyfill and then you're writing all of your stuff inside of a vm.eval but we'll take a look at this and then we'll take a look at a faster solution so to get started we're going to do a rails new video go ahead and hit enter on that now the faster solution actually uses a, uh, is it this one? I think it's this one. Uh, nope, not this one. It uses one of these pages that I have open here, the ruby.wasm uh, GitHub repo. So if you come over to the ruby.wasm GitHub repo, you can see that there's actually a script that you can include that just allows you to do that type is text slash Ruby. We'll start with the longer version and then we'll go over to the shorter version, but it won't take too long either way because we're not gonna sit here and overanalyze what all these things mean. So we're gonna go ahead and run a code dot to open this up in VS Code. Okay, now that we have VS Code open, we can come over here and we can do a Rails G controller pages homepage. We can then come into our config, our routes.rb, change the git to a root, the slash to a hash. We can go ahead and close our config, open up our app, go into our controllers and our pages controller. In here, we'll do a at title equals uh, controller says hello. Just something like that so we can use it. Oops, uh, at title equals, there we go. Uh, and then we can come into our views, our pages and our homepage. And this is where we'll pretty much spend the rest of the video. So in our homepage here, we want to grab the uh, script source here. Go ahead and paste this in. We then want to hide our side panel so it's not taking up all that space. We want to call all of these things inside of a script tag. So at the bottom here, we'll just do a script tag, close our script tag. We'll start by declaring our Ruby VM is equal to window Ruby dash wasm dash wazi. We can then do our const main method here, which is going to be an async. And then we can call main down here. So let's go ahead and let's make sure this is working. Let's just start by, uh, I guess, copying this, pasting it in, and then we can come down one level. We can grab all of these where we uh, do the buffer, the module, and the VM stuff. Again, all of this is kind of just boilerplate to get the polyfill working. Uh, pretty much everything you do down here is gonna run through your VM stuff. So if we come down here, we can do the vm.print version, come over to our web page, hit control shift I to open up the web dev tools, come into the console. And if we run a Rails S, we should then be good to refresh the page. And we can see the Ruby version being printed out. It's Ruby 3.3.0 dev. So it's different than the version of Ruby that we're running right now. So if I stop my server and run a Ruby dash V, oops, well, I guess that works. You can see it's uh, 3.2 that I'm running. So that's interesting. Uh, but again, we're pulling this from a CDN. So of course it's gonna vary uh, in, in certain circumstances, namely ones where you're not using the exact same version you're pulling in. But 
Uh, they also have an option here, or uh, an example of calling vm.eval where you require JS inside of it. You then call like some, some function and then you do a JS eval on that luckiness of variable. So you call JS eval and then you say document.body.innerText is equal to, and then you set it equal to this, this Ruby variable for the luckiness. If we save this, come over here and refresh, you'll see this home or pages home uh, disappear and change to unlucky or lucky. You can see it does take a second to kick up every time. So there is a bit of a, a latency there, just, just so you're aware. It's, this is not the most performant of, of tools in terms of like, you know, instant snappiness. It's not, not quite there yet, uh, but you know, that'll probably improve over time. But uh, this is not really that great because nobody wants to sit here and write their code inside of a string. I'm, I'm really not a fan of it. So let's take a look at the other option. So we come over to uh, the Ruby Wasm file here on the GitHub page. Let's just comment this out. I'll do that with a uh, control and a question mark and comment this out. We can then put in the CDN for this uh, Ruby Wasm Wazi. And then we can do a script tag of type text slash Ruby. And again, if you want to, you can put this in your application.html.erb file, uh, but uh, that'll cause it to run on all pages with the trade-off being that, you know, performance wise, uh, do you really want to load this on all your pages? Are you really going to need to use front end Ruby on all your pages? Probably not. Uh, but okay, we can come in here and now in here, we can just do a raw uh, puts hello world and it'll work all the same. So very different approach. You can see here it's using Ruby 3.2.0 uh, instead of the 3.3 we were just using. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at how some of this works. So we have the puts hello world. We can say, yeah, you know, we're running this from uh, WebAssembly. That's pretty cool. Uh, we can do a uh, current time. Current time is just puts the current time as time dot now. So you can see we're using that hash and that brace just like we normally would. We can also do a uh, document equals JS dot global. Now, where's this JS dot global coming from? Well, we have to require JS at the top here. So you can see it does give you the ability to use JS where you can do stuff like your document dot get element or your, your JS global and then your document dot get element by ID. Uh, the trade-off is again, we have like some syntax highlighting here. Like it knows the parentheses and the brackets and the braces, but you're still not getting a lot. The other trade-off is like GitHub Copilot's totally confused. It's like, I haven't been trained on thousands of people's uh, open source repos. So I don't know what to do here. Um, the other thing we can do is we can call the JS eval if we want to. So JS eval will just evaluate whatever JavaScript you'd like inside of a quotation mark, just like before. Uh, again, the trade-off here is you're doing this in quotes. So if you want to do like a string inside of here, you then have to use single quotes or like the alternating type of quote or escape the quotes, which can be quite a pain. So that allows you to like console log this. So if we come over here and we refresh, uh, or sorry, not console log, it allows you to set the text on your, on your DOM, but it'll tell us, hey, we can't do this because output is not defined. The reason why output's not defined is because we have to actually create a div. We'll do that up here uh, with the ID of output so we can actually grab this. So if we come over here and we refresh now, you can see we're setting this text of this div with an ID of output. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what else can we do? Well, remember that variable that we had that we were uh, declaring in our controller. So if we come up here and we put this into a div with an ID of from controller, that's our at title, we can then refresh and we can see controller says hello. Now let's try and get that div, which we can do by just calling another document.getElementById. Again, because we have our document defined up here is equal to js.globaldocument, we can then do that. Uh, so we get the element by ID uh, for the from controller. Pretty cool. Uh, let's try to do something else. Let's maybe come in here and let's do a JS eval where we do something like document.getElementById for the from controller. And then we want to put uh, not the inner HTML equal to something, but we want to get the inner HTML. So we have this and we want to assign this to some value, like, I don't know, we'll just call it value. Okay, so what can we do with this value though? So to, to prove to you that this is working, we can do something like puts 
uh, value is equal to value. So now if we refresh, we'll see value is undefined. So how do we get this to be defined? Well, because this is just a JS eval, the uh, document get element by ID is just being put into the ether. So instead, if we put a return here, it'll return that. And now you can see your value is set to controller says hello. So that's how you can get something back from the JavaScript uh, into your Ruby. So we're now getting it, well, we're getting the, the value of the text from the controller by putting the controller's data into a div. We then get that div with JavaScript. And with that JavaScript, we then return that div's contents to the value right here. So we have the controller communicating with the JavaScript and the JavaScript's communicating with the Ruby. Uh, how do we get the JavaScript here to communicate what the Ruby has to the uh, the the front end again. So we can put like another div here if we want, which is just like our output from the controller, which is gonna be whatever we have right here. For this, we can do a JS eval. And uh, this is where you really start to see like what your future would be like if you went this route. So what we can do here is we can say, all right, let's get the value. And again, we could be doing this in a cleaner way, but I wanna like be explicit about what I'm doing here and break it up into sections. You could use these these variables if you wanted to the same way we've been using them but okay we, we want to get this value so we assign it to a variable called value and then we want to get the output from controller by doing another document get element by id and then down here we can say all right i want to put the output from controller dot enter uh, html equal to from controller and then whatever's in this value so if we run all of this we can refresh you can see right here our from controller now has the controller says hello, which is what this says right here, which is our at title, which is coming from our pages controller right there. So we have everything sort of communicating. And all of this is just wrapped into a text slash Ruby script tag, which I personally prefer uh, over whatever <laughs> this monstrosity is. Although this is probably the proper way to do it. You would take this and like throw it into a stimulus controller or whatever. Uh, but for the sake of like, you know, just using some Ruby in the front end and having a cool example, uh, I think this is probably my personal preference and where I would ultimately want to see it go in the future. Uh, but of course, right now it's very much in like a uh, experimental phase uh, where it's a little bit awkward to use, but hopefully we can see this improve as time goes on. But yeah, I just thought this was interesting. Uh, hopefully you did too. And hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.